Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. We got ourselves a mailbag pod coming off of the Giants Commander's tie. I'm back home in Florida. Justin's back home in New Jersey. Justin, how you doing? Hey, Bobby Skinner. Um, coming off a tie. Still don't know how to feel about it. It feels worse that we got the Eagles this weekend. But, you know, happy that we're still in the playoffs and let's have a mailbag. That has made it, and again, every game in the NFL is winnable. Um, and I might just, you know, end up predicting a 77-0 win for the Giants. You might. But all week it's like, ah, uh, it's like bounce back. It's like, oh, I got the Eagles this week. Um, yeah. yeah and like they kick the offensive. snot out of the, if, if the Titans actually did what they were supposed to do and play the Eagles well or even win that game, then I'm like, oh, I don't know. Maybe we got a shot. But, I mean, they just – they they beat the Titans pretty Dude, bad. Their, so. their O-line is so good. Their receivers are so good. Jalen yeah. Hurts is playing – like, and then on defense, like, they just have – you know, they got also anyways, they're a good team. Not gonna think um, about it until our preview pod. Yeah, yeah. Not having by the way, if you want to get a question on the on the mailbag pod, do not ask about the next opponent. We never ask uh put next opponent questions on the no. pre- on the mailbag pod. Well the preview pod's for. Uh first, this ep- exactly first, this episode is brought to you by some special people. Anthony Carvaelli. He's carving up defenses like uh not Daniel, not the Giants right now. Mm, Nick Jaylen C Hurts. and the C stands for champion. Angelo Trento, Angelo MGT. What does MGT stand for? Management. I was thinking of like an acronym. Nope. Like, but like my first thing that came to my head. Mike Grill Tahoe. Tyler S. What's with those just one word, one letter last names? Mm-hmm. Duncan, like Tim Duncan, Jelly Bloom, and Alex Archer. Archer's a show a lot of people would like that I've never seen. Justin, who are these people? Julian, say something. They're from Patreon. I have to say, you got a haircut like last week, right? Yep. The way that the hair is growing in, um, and your face just looks fantastic. Just your facial structure. I mean, I, I'm jealous of it. I, I got I got my neck beard going. I'm I'm getting, it's end of the end of the year. I'm gaining a little weight back. Julian looks fantastic. Bobby, you look all right. Patreon.com slash Talk Giants. If you want to see Julian. I got the afro face, going. Got the afro going. Uh, yeah, you probably still got the spiked hair um, from wearing a hat. You know, wearing a hat, the electricity. That's how that works, right? From, you know, wearing the winter hat all day on Sunday. Patreon.com slash Talk Giants. If you want to see Julian's beautiful face, um, you can subscribe there. And you can watch us while we record the show's live. Plus some other benefits. Plus some other tiers. You know the drill. Patreon.com slash Talk Giants. Thanks for our patrons. It is funny that our last podcast um, in in Jersey, I am wearing three layers, a winter hat, and still a little cold, and you're like in a t-shirt and just yep. fine. And it's, it's like, that's... Well, do that's, you ever have the... I always have this, and it's a very comforting feeling. Whenever I go to Giants games, and you're cold, it's the fourth quarter, whatever. You walk back to your car, you start to warm up. That's when you regain the feeling in your feet. And it's then the you best sit, feeling in the world. You sit in the car, and then the you van, turn. Actually, the van heater sucks, so it was not as good as usual. But my rental car had heated seats. So that was nice. So you turn the heat all the way up. Like in the car ride, you're sitting in traffic, so you really heat up and you really warm up. And then you're feeling really toasty. I think the best feeling in the world is taking off all those clothes. And I brought a change of clothes with us. I brought long pants, and then I just stripped down to my T-shirt that I just all the T-shirt underneath all the layers. And then that's what I was wearing at the warehouse. And you did not do any of that. You just kept all your layers oh, on. I, I keep it on until I go until it's like, all right, I am going to sleep now. Like I will. I was in the hotel room and three layers until it's like, all right, time to go to sleep. No, but all that warmth that I built up because I had all those layers on in the heat. And then I was still warm while we were recording. But it was a very funny New Jersey versus Florida man moment in the month of December. You know, me just being in short sleeves and then you being still in three layers with the hat on, too. You didn't even take the hat off with the headset. Mics, no, I was, was like funny. feeling kind of chilly. Um, anyways, t- uh, take it away, Steve. You bald ass. Mail time. Mail time. The mail's here. Come on. Bye, guys. Here's the mail, it never fails. It makes you want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Mail! 
Thanks, Steve from Blue's <laughs> Clues. Justin, let's get into the mail. I feel like you were about to say a word there that's not appropriate. Jake Barrow at Do a Barrow Roll. With a lot of season left, it feels like the book is out on our offense and defenses are adjusting. Obviously, they can't completely change offensive identity. So what kind of realistic adjustments slash wrinkles do you think they can slash should make to avoid defenses keying in like Washington did? Bobby, I have something to say just before you go, because you're going to talk about schematically, they could do this and you could do that. And, it's actually, you know, my comments are going to be less schematic based, but go ahead. You know, they're playing single high. This is what you could do there. You can run mesh. You can run flood. Blah, blah, blah. Like, all right. I'm exhausted. I am exhausted talking about this we talk about this every week and this isn't even just a this year issue issue this has been every single week for the last three fucking years that we've basically have had this show every week we talk about how can the offense can it how could they adjust how could they create more explosive plays ba, 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 ba. i'm exhausted that's it so i'm I, i'm actually not going to talk about a lot of scheme because i think one of the good things they do do is schematically as they add nuances to what they like to do every single week. You know, they're not just running the same play over and over again. Like they add, they run the same concepts, but they add different stuff to it. So that's the thing that I like about this. Um, and like, like Jake said, they're not going to just totally flip with their offensive identity. They're not going to come out just running and gunning. We are bomb bombs away. And they shouldn't, honestly, you know, they're not Buffalo and Kansas city. They don't have the, the, the personnel to be that, but, I think it's a couple, a few really simple things because I know a lot of people like the last few weeks, Mike Kafka, really there's things you could pick from, but the last, this past game was like the first, like to me, just bad Mike Kafka game. Not the, you want some things back, but just bad Mike Kafka game. And here's the ways I think they can get better. More drop back passing on first down. Because people people think like when you say drop back passing, it means like just throwing bombs fifty yards downfield. No, and, and even and even I don't know these, why that goes hand in hand with some people. Well, I mean, Giants fans are just so, and I don't blame Giants fans. And the offensive line is still bad, but Giants fans are just have had it beaten to their heads for basically since we won our last Super Bowl. Even that offensive line wasn't good in twenty eleven. They weren't good. So we've had it beat in our heads for over 10 years now that the offensive line isn't good enough. The offensive line isn't good enough. The offensive line isn't good enough. So you associate throwing the ball down the field that you need five, six seconds for plays to develop. No, I mean, we've seen plenty of times and I've done videos where Daniel Jones, 20 plus air yard passing attempts and the ball is out in like less than three seconds. There have been plenty of those attempts. So yeah, and f so again, we're, and we're not asking, we're asking for more throws down the field, but we're not asking for them to like, let's, we're we're going to be throwing the ball at 20 no, plus yards eight balance. times a game. Balance. But here's why I say specifically on first down, because guess what? You can hit your second, third, fourth progression on first down, and it's still a win. It's still a win, because you can't throw really a, th a check down on on third and five or third and six. Third and seven. Yeah. And what, if you does, throw, what good does a check down do? You throw a check down on second and 10 or second and 11 or second and nine. Say if it gets like four or five yards. Cuts that's in and still, half. You're still put in, in like a third four. Like it's still not the greatest situation. So there's more drop back passing on first down. Um, we've seen consistently that when given that Daniel Jones has played well. Like he's played well when he has the options. Like, hey, I can check out of this. I can, I can do this. Um, and sometimes you can check into a run if you start doing that. You know, um, and then this pass game more so than other. Stop play action out of spots that aren't rundowns. Like they were, it was second and thirteen, and they were play actioning out of it. So come on. Like, and they were all over on the boot on, you know, some of the bootleg stuff. Like, and, and if there's one thing they could kind of get away from and that defenses have the playbook on is the bootleg stuff. Like the bootleg stuff is kind of, it's, it's been figured out a bit. Um, even though they've had, they had some successful, like seven, eight yard, 10 yard throw. So don't throw it away, but I wouldn't be so, you're not going to do what you did versus the bears anymore. It's not going to happen. You know, you're not going to get these chunk plays out of it. Um, just stop play actioning out or out of plays that aren't rundowns because it's, Teams aren't falling for yeah, it. And who, guess who what? And a fooling? lot of the sacks are coming out of those spots, out of the play action spots. Yeah, who are you fooling? Right? Um, Fool nobody. Yeah. And then my last thing on this is don't be a pussy at the at at the end of the half. Like they ran four draws, a design swing pass to Saquon, and then that read option. That read option on third and one 
with uh you know 19 seconds left with no timeouts sorry was to me was so weak you're 11 yards out from the end zone run a conversion route and 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 honestly it was like a no win situation because like people were like well Evan Neal didn't get to the 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 guy he's blocking Evan Neal was blocking as if the ball was handed off so he's just trying to seal the linebacker off and guess what and then still Daniel Jones would have had beat someone so it wasn't even like a does there's plays that look like read option that are designed quarterback runs where you like you know you crack the wide receiver down and you bring the tight end from the backside across and you just you're not just blocking straight up that's what that was it was just a regular read option and it was like that's not going to go 11 yards in the end zone when you have all like an unblock a, a determined unblock guy so um those would be my main things yeah yeah especially the end of the half point i mean that's something that all year they have not there hasn't been one end of the first half opportunity two minute drill where the Giants offense has shown like what's the, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, like tempo, you know, that they've shown the ability to that they want urgency, to, urgency. Thank you. That's the word that I'm looking for. You know, they haven't shown any urgency all, all year. Um, I, again, it, it's just exhausting, man. You know, it, I, and I do try. It's not a Dable Kafka thing. Um, I, I do think they just don't trust these players. They don't trust the offensive line. I think they're afraid of taking sacks. I think they're afraid of turning over the ball. I think they're afraid of wide receivers making mistakes. But we had an entire summer where, and again, this could just be talking points, but we did have an entire summer of Brian Dable talking about being open to making mistakes in the name of being aggressive. And that's what I thought this year was going to be about. And it's literally the exact opposite. Um, so kind of a little frustrated about that. And I'm not asking for the most aggressive, just more aggressive Again, than what balance, we're seeing. Balance, balance. Yeah, and it's, it's not, not just ba- black or white. And it's and and it's not balanced for the sake of just this, you know balance sake, where people are like you got to be balanced. Well, so I saw, I think it was it Carl that said it like you know I don't Probably. believe in balance because it's like you know not every player on your team is balanced skill level, so you play to your. But it's like all right, but like playing to. Say one and the play action is not working right yeah, now. Yeah, right so. now, right now the giant strengths are Daniel Jones throwing the football because it's not Saquon Barkley right now. I have a question. Sure. Take away Andrew Thomas. Who do you think has been the second best player on the offense this year? Second best player on the offense. Um, I mean, you know, you you can say you can say Daniel Jones. I kind of am. I'm gonna say Saquon for now. But if the if you go off the last five games, it's Daniel Jones, and that and these have been Daniel Jones' not best last five games. Yeah, which it, we have a we it have speaks a, more to the talent of the offense as a whole than it necessarily does DJ. Right, but it's like DJ has been like DJ has been a solid quarterback this year. The issue is that like solid quarterback is not what you're shooting for from the quarterback position. Right. He's also Especially, hasn't he hasn't been given the full opportunity to show like who he is, what he can be, and what he's about. And that's the frustrating thing about this year. You know, this is a little bit of a Daniel Jones contract extension talk. I can't believe we're ending another year saying, still not really sure if Daniel Jones is a franchise quarterback. And he hasn't, uh, if if we were going to end the year, well, no, if he did miss games due to injury, then that would be further proof that Daniel Jones is not a franchise quarterback. Further proof that Daniel Jones isn't the guy, right? That quote. But we're ending another year saying, not really sure because coaches didn't really let him rock and roll like we thought that they were going to this summer. I thought we were going to find it out this year, either because he was going to miss games or because this coaching staff was going to allow him to make mistakes. And then if he makes mistakes, then that helps you answer the question on whether he's a franchise quarterback. Or if he flourishes, then that helps you. 100% helps you answer whether he's a franchise quarterback or not. But we're going to probably end another year saying, you know, Dan Jones had a good year, but still not really sold if he can be a good quarterback in the a really good quarterback in the NFL. Well, since we're in this conversation right now, let's just talk about Daniel Jones. I mean, we're we're you know twelve games into the season. Um, you know, this is this is this is you know Daniel Jones was hurt uh, at this point last year. Um, can I give you a crazy stat? I'm gonna. I just think Daniel Jones is in the Kirk Cousins tier, and some people will say that's too high. I think that's where he is, and I think that's kind of where. He will be for his career. Yeah, I, I don't. And the question is, what do you do with him then? Because there's one side where people like, like I don't think those type of quarterbacks should just be thrown away in the name of like, you want Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen? Because like, okay, well, yeah, uh, I agree. We all want those guys, but it's yeah, not that was going to be my rebuttal to you because if you put him in that Kirk Cousins tier, you've been very much on this train of 
okay, well, you're there's only three Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen's, and you know, name me and uh, Joe Burrow's in the world, right? You know, there's only a few of those guys in the entire world that exist. So having a Kirk Cousins on your team, are you like okay with that? I don't I think I'm okay with it if they're like, hey, we will address QB when there's a QB that we want and is realistic to get. Correct. Um I'm not okay. <sighs> I haven't thrown this okay. out there. I'm not okay if they're like here if they give him a Kirk Cousins contract. How about Co- that? Correct. I-, I haven't thrown this out there, but here's like my official prediction that is coming on December 6th at 7:57 p.m. My official prediction for Daniel Jones: a three-year deal with an out after year two. See, even that is that's that's a long contract. I I don't. I think that makes sense for him. And I think that makes sense for the Giants because I it don't makes sense think for him. I don't know if it makes sense for the Giants. If I they don't, don't think I don't think this GM. I don't think this this front office really wants him that much. But you don't think like an out after year two, like they would be OK with it. Like and you wouldn't be OK with that, but they'd be locking themselves. I guess maybe because you could all you could always do what Kansas City did where exactly your DJ's the quarterback. Taylor's the backup. And then so. It would have to be like a very clear out after year three. Yes, I, I agree two. with that. Yeah, so I agree I with could, that. I could see myself signing up for that, but then, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to give my official, but. Um, yeah, that's that's where I am. I, I kind of have reached that point with Daniel Jones saying, I'm okay with a three-year deal with an out after year two. I'm very okay with that. See, but here's my thing is I'd rather just tag him. I know the tag is. You a think ton he of deserves money. that tag, like that? That no, big tag? but I'd. Ra- I think. I think that a tag is less commitment than that three-year deal is. Yeah, you may be right. But then we're in this whole limbo again of another contract year, and are we going to extend him? Are we not? We're in this whole limbo again. Yeah, it's a. It's a. It's such a. It's. I guess this is like the spot. This is a weird. It's a weird spot because yeah, it's, it's a weird, weird spot. Like he's not he's not a bad quarterback. He's not a anyways. Uh he's he's not a great quarterback right now, but you're also been like he's playing fairly well with dog shit players around him in good scheme. Um you know, so we just spent twenty yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that question to go that way. But Yeah. All right, but let's uh let's maybe dive a little further into that. We initially had this question a little further in the show, but I was really looking forward to talking about this. Chris Mickle. Who has been the more consistent player in their career? Daniel Jones or Saquon Barkley? And does that matter when talking about an extension? I'm not talking about who's the best player. I'm talking about who has been the more consistent player in their careers so far. I mean, it's definitely been DJ. I mean, Saquon's career has been a freaking roller coaster. And I think it, I think 100% it matters. I mean, now, is Daniel Jones going to get the best quarterback money? But Saquon wants best running back money. Or at least you know in that in that range, and like giving Saquon a Bark- Barkley a contract scares the crap out of me, because one yep. the injury history, and two it's you could, so like right now I think the offensive line is more to blame for some of Saquon's like most of Saquon's production issues the last five weeks. But that's they, the problem. He, that's he is, also the problem with running backs too. That, <laughs> yes, and that is the problem is that he plays a position that is reliant. It's the it's the only posi- it's the position that's most reliant on other players around them in the NFL, which and, and that's running back. So, and that's like, do I? And and I think I think you made uh, had a, a really good line on the Monday pod because instead of getting into the semantics of like, oh, is it the O line? Is it Saquon? Get him behind this. Da, da, da. It's just like he's not a difference maker right now, which is yep. a fact. Yep. Not an advantage. It's not an advantage. Yeah, an advantage. To have, an advantage. That's it's not an advantage to have Saquon Barkley on the field right now. Outside of, I guess, oh, the threat of Saquon Barkley. But I'm sorry, a, a person being a threat and maybe loading the box a little bit more on some plays is not going to be the reason why I give a former first round pick, a top five pick, a contract extension for a lot of years and a lot of money. That will yeah. not be the sole reason why I give that contract extension. I mean, he's averaging to be- four point four yards per carry, which is like significantly less than his first two years. Yeah. Um. And also, P- I mean, PFF put out a, you know, a, a tweet about yards after contact. I talked about that on Sunday show. How it's it's really bad for Saquon Barkley right now. Saquon Barkley is in like the bottom five out of all running backs in the NFL that qualify for that metric. Bottom five of all running backs in like yards after contact per attempt. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good, man. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely not good. All right, um, let's read an ad. Yeah, re- I'll read an ad, and I'll, and I'll tell you guys about my friends at DraftKings. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is my go-to when betting on the NFL this holiday se- this season. Uh, so I was in Jersey, so I was able to use DraftKings this past weekend. And I left. I was like, "Oh, I'm down five dollars. You know, maybe I'm, I'm, a, you know, I have a problem. I'm down five. No, because I forgot I put money on the Saints plus four. So once again, I leave New Jersey up. I am taking DraftKings all of their freaking money right now. New customers can bet just five dollars on any NFL team to win their game and get one hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they do. That's a lot. I and mean, if you're as good as gambling as me, sheesh." Check this out. Right now, everyone can earn up to 100% boost with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app, place the same game parlay, and combine multiple bets like which team will win, player props, point totals, and more. The more legs you add, the bigger the boost. The bigger your shot to win big. Again, and by the way, I've used other sites. DraftKings is by far the easiest. Am I right? Am I right? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code John Boy. Place a five dollar bet on any NFL team to win their game and get one hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they do. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code John Boy. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Next question. Next question is coming from. This is going to be a tough last name. Going to butcher this. Josh Lupasakis. There you go. Josh asks, with Kafka's play calling becoming more questionable the past couple of weeks, do you do you think Dable should take the reins and call the plays for the offense? I'm adding a secondary question to this, and I'm asking, why did Jason Garrett literally get an entire year of an, an entire year plus an offseason of excuses? And Brian Dable, um, you know, has basically what are we in week thirteen? Brian Dable has had week uh, thirteen weeks, and he should be fired now. Why is that a thing? Well, they're saying Kafka. I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mike, why is Mike why are people calling for Mike Kafka's head when Jason Garrett got an entire year plus a whole offseason worth of excuses? That would be unbelievably weak to me. If if Brian Dable fired or demote like took over play calling, that would be so weak to me. That like that's like, oh, I, pan- I like I'm a panic guy. Like I I worry about outside perception. One, those guys are very involved like and like they, Brian Dable is extremely involved in the game planning and what yeah. they're doing. You know, like let's not pretend. You know, the offensive line coach is a Buffalo guy. The QB and- coach is a Buffalo guy. And guess what? When Mike Kafka came to the Giants, he didn't just come like, "Here's my playbook." No, they kind of put the playbook together, and it's like you have yeah. to learn our verbiage. They didn't learn Mike. You know, he's the rare play call. You know, offensive coordinator who is learning. He learned the system, not the other way around. Yeah, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bobby, but. You know, we're talking about how the Giants are a little bit more, a little bit too much run dependent, heavy on first down, and they should be throwing more on early downs and maybe too many play action bootlegs. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think every week in a game plan, there's X amount of plays for first and 10 situations. There's X amount of plays for second and short, second and medium, second and long. I mean, so those things are decided during the week and during the game plan and during the install moments. And then Mike Kafka is simply just choosing and selecting which play should be called within those situations. Am I right in assuming that? And Dable's part of that. Yes. Um. So yeah, that would, that would be, I mean, I think you, you'd be better off just firing him. Like if, if you felt the need to do that, then you just should fire Mike Kafka. Yeah. Um. So no, I, I would, I would be pissed if they did that. I still think Mike Kafka is again, I think he had one really bad gameplay calling. Yeah, could you say the two weeks before there's some things they should want back? Absolutely. Um, but just I, I like I think Mike Kafka's a good play caller. I think he's a good offensive coordinator. I think he's going to get better at that position yep, too. I agree. Um, you know, so yeah, I, to me that would be extremely weak if they did that. Yeah, I just I just can't believe that. Again, Jason Garrett got. Like we we were criticized in 2020 for saying that Jason Garrett's bad. People are like, well, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have that. An entire off season of optimism heading into 2021 about Jason Garrett. Oh, he's got Kenny Galladay now. My like my, my Kafka was part of this seven and two start, and we were praising him. We were praising him through the first nine weeks of the season. So I, I don't I don't get how we've had such a quick turnaround. So yes. Yeah, 
I mean, it's just offensive coordinator is one of those jobs where it's like it's you people turn on you quick. Yeah. Well, they didn't really with Garrett, at least not some people. All right. Next question is uh, coming from Buff- Buffoon J60 at Buffoon J60. If there was one offseason move you can have back, what could it be? What would it be? You go first. I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to I'm, I'm just saying multiple. I would have let's, cut let's say your first one at least. Well, I would have cut Martinez and Sterling Shepard and then keep James Bradbury. That wouldn't have been enough to keep James Bradbury. Well then re, re- I, I would have kept found a way to kept to keep James Bradbury, but also okay. cut those two dudes. Okay. Just flat out. Yeah. Cutting Shep wouldn't have actually gave them a little less money. Cutting Blake would have saved them money. Um, probably would have been a wash. But yeah, if they wanted to restructure a deal to keep Bradbury, I don't think anyone would have been too mad at that. Like I think it just when Joe Shane said in his opening press conference, we gotta get to this amount of cap space, you know, without restructuring. It kind of told the story. But yeah, James Bradbury would be I don't get like, oh, he's not great in man coverage, blah, blah. No, he would he would be really good right now for this defense. Yeah, Fabian Moreau's doing all right for this defense. Uh just imagine how good James Bradbury would be. <laughs> Mine may not be the most popular, but I'm thinking long term in this. So it's like what ha- happens with the Giants long term. So I'm not gonna say you know, signing Mark Lewinsky. Because honestly, Mark Lewinsky's contract is not that bad, even though he sucked. Um I wouldn't have drafted Wando Robinson mm. over guys like Alec Pierce, George Pickens, Alante. T- Al- remember, remember, people thought I was crazy for liking Alante Taylor a lot, the cornerback out of Tennessee. He's balling right now for the Saints. Um, mm-hmm. I was open to like drafting Tyreek Woolen in the second round. Now, he was I was, like, and I was wrong round. about that. You were right about that. Yeah, uh, second round maybe like maybe would have been a, a reach, but I mean he's balling out in Seattle right now. So one, that's just I don't think. Wandale is going to be this amazing player, and, he, and it's just he's a five foot eight slot only wide receiver, who's not the greatest route runner in the world either. Um, like, don't get me wrong, I think he's a weapon, he's a useful NFL player, but I think at that high of a second round pick, I just think you almost got to swing a little more as higher, you know, like take an ex wide receiver. Like I, I think Alex, like Alec Pierce, would be like huge for this Giants team right now. Like he's putting up decent stats with. You know, a noodle arm quarterback, and he's a deep threat. Was uh, Christian Watson available before we n- traded back? No, he 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 went at thirty four to the. He Packers. went thirty four. Okay. Um. So, but yeah, I you get know. your point. What's what's the ceiling of Wandale Robinson? Cole Beasley, which is a good player, and 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 the the offense can run through the slot wide receiver, um. But I do truly think, like, I don't think he's. I, I mean, and that's that's a good player. Like, so if you get, so here's the thing: if you get Cole Beasley in that pick, that's a good pick. But it's like, do do we? You know? Yeah. Um. Uh, so, all right. Next question: Mike Petro at MJP two two seven five. What do you guys think about trying to get Saquon and Brita on the field together more often? It would definitely give us more speed and possibly more chances to create misdirection. Yeah, misdirection is what this running game needs. I mean, the the touchdown that Saquon Barkley had was misdirection. Um, yeah, I didn't think. Yeah, I mean, it, to me, I, I don't want to go super in depth, but misdirection is what this team needs. Like, make linebackers think a ton, make them think a ton, uh, because you know we we don't have the greatest guys up front, but they can do a decent enough job run blocking wise. Just teams are going to stack the blocks. They're going to run blitz. Get these guys. Get guys out of place. And we're not just going to line up and run, run block better and run better than defenses at this point. Uh, so you got to you got to throw a bunch of misdirection at them. But I also think passing would help more too. I think passing the ball with both of those guys on the field at the same time is not a bad idea either. Uh, I would certainly rather have the ball in Saquon Barkley's hands or Matt Breida's hands, where you know maybe we're putting them in motion pre-snap. I understand that Saquon Barkley has been somewhat of an advantage. He has been an advantage in pass blocking situations this year, and the offensive line does need help and does need Saquon Barkley to be an anchor in pass blocking. But if you have Matt Breida on the field, I I don't think you're putting a cornerback on him. I think you're going to maybe have a safety or a linebacker that's on him. I would take Matt Breida 
um, going in motion at the snap versus a linebacker every day of the week and then twice on Sundays, especially twice on Sunday because we play on Sunday. So um, when you're questioning your wide receiver talent, when you're questioning your skill position player talent, um, getting the ball in a guy like Matt Breida's hands, you know, Saquon Barkley in the receiving game, that stuff seems like it should be easy, but they just kind of haven't been doing it, and that's why I'm sitting here and they're sitting in East Rutherford. So, Matt Breida's having the worst year of his career. <sighs> Another year where uh, he's going to end the year where you have a fan base saying, maybe he should have got the ball a little bit more. I feel like every year of his career, every year of his career, maybe besides 2019, each year I think a fan base has said Matt Breida should have gotten the ball more. Stuff. Next question. Tough. Jack Salazzoni at Jack Salazzoni. The Giants pass rush looked good, really good, with our top four guys healthy. Do you think we see Wink Martindale dial it back on the blitzes with our front four getting as many pressures as they got this past week? So versus better quarterbacks, absolutely. And you've actually seen Wink Martindale do that. Like, so one of the games I watched when Wink Martindale was signed as a defensive coordinator was the Buffalo playoff game where it was low scoring. And he really didn't blitz at all in that game. Um, There's so certain think, quarterbacks that are on a do not blitz list. And like Josh Allen is on one. Uh, Jalen Hurts may be on that. We'll kind of watch it and we'll let well, you know. But yeah. I actually looked at Jalen Hurts as like versus like he is like so he's a good bit worse versus the blitz and def and way worse under pressure, which every QB is. But I didn't like it. his under pressure numbers weren't great. Um, but no, I, I don't think it does. I think it, I honestly think it almost encourages in the blitz more because guess what? It's, it's one thing to have to prepare for the blitz. It's another thing to have to prepare for the blitz. And it's like all four of these cats can just get home on their own. Yeah. And what does blitzing do? It creates one-on-ones for those guys. So the more one-on-ones for those guys and they're consistently winning, the better you have chance you have. Oh. oh, shit. I said something. Bobby sneeze. Oh, he's really going crazy. Oh man. He's really going at it. <laughs> it's a shame I said something. Yeah, um, my main thing from this game, Bobby, uh, I clipped 13 significant pass rush plays where certain plays that the pass rush had an impact on a play. And I was surprised to see how many untouched pressures the Giants defense had this past week. And that's because of Wink Martindale creating certain matchup situations, you know, creating these blitz packages that get these free rushers. In 2019 and 2020, Wink Martindale's Baltimore Ravens led the league both years in untouched pressures. So I clipped up 13 significant pass rush plays. About four or five of them came from untouched pressures, including the Kayvon Thibodeau sack this past Sunday. That was an untouched pressure. So um I think it's going to depend on a situational opponent basis on if the Giants may be a little bit more blitz happy one game versus conservative the next. But I think in general, I agree with you just because we have this front four that shouldn't necessarily tell Wink Martindale to be like, all right, I'm going to get a little bit more conservative because I trust these guys up front because a lot of these plays on Sunday that the pass rush played an impact. It was forced because these were just set flat out untouched pressures. Yeah. And, uh, Sunday, they com- those four guys combined for 19 pressures. Now, Via commanders- what? Huh? Via what? PFF or Pro Football Reference? PFF. That impresses me less. Okay. <laughs> um, I should look at Pro Football Reference. I know. Stop I'm looking at PFF. I mean, I get it. You have to do it. We have to come to a consensus. I really wish... I really wish that they counted pressures for offensive linemen because we look at pressures and QB hits and stuff like that for offensive line from because P, for PFF because we have no other reason to. And then we look at like pressures, QB hits, sacks uh, for for defenders on pro football reference. Which did you see? I got a little roasted for my Andrew Thomas. Like, why did PFF credit him for this sack video? No, I didn't. I didn't see it where people saying that they were well, right because technically and in, in, in theory they were right. Like, it's the guy Andrew Thomas should have picked it up, but in practice it's like. I don't know. This is like the way the Giants set this up is pretty effed up. I mean, there were there were two guys rushing the passer. Well, it's like why would you use Bellinger to chip on the second guy instead of just having him block the outside guy? And if you're just gonna, if Thomas is is responsible for that outside guy who looks like he's in a blitzing position, why even have Bellinger chip at all and just make it, you know, give him. Give like an outlet for Jones. It was it was it was weird. So like if you draw it up on a board, it's like yeah, this is Thomas's guy. But like in practice, I'm like this just 
And even like the guy, like like some of the like oh, like Whitworth and stuff, they weren't roasting me. They were talking about it. It's like this is this is a pretty great blitz call versus this blocking protection. Yeah. Um, but it's just like I don't, I just don't like Thomas getting credited for a sack where it's like, well, he didn't get beat. It's just like they kind of called the right, the perfect blitz. The Did right Andrew time. Whitworth say that it should have been on Thomas? Did he give like an opinion on that? Yeah, he said it was Thomas. It it and like if it was drawn up that Thomas should end up blocking that guy. Okay. So, I mean, they're right, and I agree with them 100%. It's just like, it's one of those, like, in theory versus in practice type things. Yeah. yeah. What were we talking about? Um, We were talking about Manscaped, Bobby. Tis the season for clean balls. Fa la 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 la. Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season. Can't wait for NASCAR to come back clear. From stocking stuffers to white elephants. I was talking about albino elephants a couple weeks ago for some reason. Manscaped's products are the top of every wish list with win this year's white elephant gift and help all the men in your life safe or yourself. Love yourself. How about yourself? Get yourself a gift and save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash giants. Manscaped, they offer a handful of their liquid formulations. Liquid moist things. Shampoos, body washes, upstairs and downstairs deodorant. Gels, exfoli- exfoliants, tough word, and more. There is so... Oh, I, this is new. The Shears 2.0 is their full kit for nail care, scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file for the traveling man. Manscaped literally has everything that you need to take care of yourself, look good, feel good, even smell good. Save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash giants. That's right, 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash giants. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. All right, next question. You'll be glad you did. You'll be glad Um, you did. Next question. Andre sports fan and Andre sports fan. I give a lot of credit to Andre because I don't think he likes me. He unfollowed me because he does not like analytics, but he listens to every show. And I, I met him at training camp. He's a good dude. Yeah, I, he did not. I did not. I don't think I met him because I don't think he likes me. But I, like I said, I respect him and I love him. Understanding that the offense as a collective. Oh, excuse me. Understanding that the offense is a collective. If you had to pick. The one unit holding back the offense the most, which unit would you choose? Saquon Barkley, uh, Daniel Jones, the offensive line, or the wide receivers? I would say offensive line. I, I definitely think that is the thing that's holding it back the most. Um, but here's the point you can make is that if they really, really love Daniel Jones and believed in Daniel Jones, that they would let him do more. Because, I mean, look at Josh Allen in 2019. You know, he threw deep passes at a 15% rate. He threw, uh, you know, intermediate 10 to 19 at a 20% rate. I mean, I'll pull up Daniel Jones numbers while you talk, but it's like, like you, I think it's, I think it's a, like, it's a combination of things. Um, and I don't like people, like, even if you disagree with it, cause I, so, I, I mean, I disagree with it. Daniel Jones is definitely a part of the equation for at least the coaching staff. I'm, yeah, so gonna... like DJ is throwing DJ is throwing the ball deep ten percent less than Josh Allen did in twenty nineteen when Josh Allen wasn't a great quarterback in twenty nineteen yet, and then the intermediate they're throwing about the same rate. But I will, but I will say like uh, throwing the ball deep doesn't equate to offensive like doesn't just solely correlate or causate like offensive success. So the Giants' offense, I think right... it does offensive trust though. All right, that's okay. Okay. The Giants' offense, according to Football Outsiders this year, and I'm just using Football Outsiders simply as like a power ranking metric right now. The Giants' offense this year is ranked 15th according to Offensive DVOA. The Buffalo offense from 2019 is 21st. So, I do think this year's you know the Giants also have Saquon Barkley this year. The Buffalo Bills did not have that running game in 2019, but I think the Giants' offense this year is better than the Buffalo offense in 2019. But again, you we're talking about the quarterback here. You can say that they do it. You know, they did have more trust in Josh Allen in 2019 than they do Daniel Jones in 2021. Who's he throwing the ball to in 2019? Sammy Watkins. <laughs> no Watkins was remember Watkins was trader. I mean, Robert Foster was getting oh yards up on that team. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, so, so the receivers were not very good on that team. Yeah. I would go receivers simply because I I don't see the routes that are being run 
on a consistent basis that is telling Darius Slayton, all right, win this play, win this route, especially Isaiah Hodgins, Richie James, maybe Richie James on third downs. But when is Isaiah Hodgins, when have we seen Isaiah Hodgins make a catch that isn't a crosser that's that's built on getting him in space and pulling a safety here with the clear out route? Like, you know what I mean? They're not asking these wide receivers. They're not asking, especially like Daniel Bellinger. They're not asking these guys to run crisp, clear routes and get the separation on their own to get open. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's, I, I mean, it's, like you said, it's a combination of all three. Yeah. I just think interior offensive line is the biggest one. But also, like, yeah, they don't really have a downfield threat outside of there. It's like, and, uh, I don't know. The, the, the person that, this, we have a question later from Mr. Brownson. Like, the personnel is going to, it might be the next question, but the personnel is going to be very oh, different. Oh, vastly this different. This football team is going to be. <laughs> well, I think it's the next different. question, so just ask it. Yeah, yeah, and That's and Andre, just to put a bow on you know Andre's question, I mean it's the I I feel bad for not giving like a sports radio answer, but it's been this back and forth that I've had with myself the last three weeks where it it kind of just is everything, man. It's a team sport, it's a nuanced sport, you know it it's tough, but it kind of is just a combination of a lot of these things. And if you think that you have the answer for one of them, I'm sorry, I think you're kind of wrong, Mr. Brownstone. How different do you expect the roster to look next year? Say we don't bring back guys like Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley. Who would you like to see fill their spots, whether it's through the draft free agency, talking Giants versus the world, we ain't looking to tie. Doug Analytics, John Brown, Zay Jones, Cole Beasley. So actually, probably that's better than what we have right now. Zay Jones, yeah. Cole Zay Beasley. Jones got some yes. money from the Jags. Cole Beasley, definitely. And John Brown, I think John Brown was kind of washed at that point. Robert Foster, though, he had some big catches that year. On the, I think he's on the Giants practice squad still. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this whole office is going to look different, man. Like, so it, if QB running back is the question, it's like, do you bring those same guys back? Wide receiver is going to be vastly different. You know, like, yeah. Juan, I, I don't know how much faith you put in Juan Dale. Uh, you know, Slayton, I'd like to bring Slayton back, but not as like a, like, he's not going to be your, your top guy. I still think they sh- they're you know the tight ends they're I don't think they're just like ah right, we got Bellinger we're good there I think they want to improve that position, um, and then on defense like linebacker and cornerback should be vastly different next year. Yeah, this is it's crazy how much work they have left. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I mean this is for the year one of the rebuild. Like like it's it's gonna be it's gonna be very very different next year, which is kind of exciting because there's gonna be a lot of new. Yeah. Yeah, get get your get your full stamp. Get you know Joe Shane's kind of full stamp. We'll start to see, we'll start to see the vision. We'll start to see the trend. You know, the, especially with the second draft class, are you solely going to go for these guys that are twenty twenty one, and are you solely going to go for these guys that you know maybe the consensus doesn't have you very high, but you believe in your coaching to coach these guys up? Um, like the the way that I'm going to go about my draft prep this year is like I'm gonna like the first thing I'm going to look at is your age. <laughs> I'm looking at your age and you know, if you're like 23, 24, I'll look at you, but I'm not thinking that you're going to the giants 100%. So, well, that was what we did in 2021 with free agency. It's like, all right, they get guys that there's some type of connection to and oh, don't yeah. have and then any they did injury the history. Opposite. Did the exact opposite. Uh, um, I'd like, I would like to think that Joe Shane maybe will stick to his philosophy because Dave Gettleman, you know, didn't have a spine because he just caved into Fan, you know, they just caved in. The, they all did. They all caved in the fan pressure because they had to win. So hopefully he just sticks to his guns, but maybe he won't. Next question. Eli Manning's best friend he never met. It's a great user. Hearing lots of theories about things being wrong in the locker room and Dable not sounding right in pressers. What is your opinion on the state of the locker room and coaching staff? So I put this in, this question in, and I asked people, like, is there any, like, is there any smoke to like, you know, Rodarius and take her out or tweeting after the game and stuff? Um, and I didn't really get any answers on it. So I don't love this question at this moment now because I don't have anything to give you. Um, but that definitely is not good that Rodarius and Tay are, are tweeting no. that. Like, I think, I, but at the same time, it's like Rodarius Williams and Tay Crowder are not the two players who should be tweeting that. <laughs> you know, Rodarius Williams has played. Just has just recently came back from injury. 
played a solid game versus Dallas, and I do think he should have played. Uh, and Tay Crowder even, and Tay Crowder, I actually think should be the Giants starting Mike linebacker over Jalen Smith. Not my, I think it should be Tay Crowder and, and and Mike McFadden. But I only think that because our linebacker sucks so bad. It's not because yeah. Tay Crowder is being done this disservice as a football player who's being held back. Like like you get freed to any other roster, and you are probably a little lower on the depth chart. Actually, no, he's probably the third linebacker on most teams. Um, yeah, no, I guess if Rodarius Williams and Tay Crowder or the worst of the Giants locker room problems right now. I think I take that. Yeah. And well, and like, so you know how it goes with press conferences is when the team wins, they're great. Um, and when they lose, it's like, this guy's quite the way he answers this. And, and I think that's some, and I do not care, but th- like I, we said in the preseason and, and you know, how it is honeymoon. Nothing can go wrong. Mm-hmm. They will suck to the press conferences. Oh, and, like, and the la- especially the last two weeks against uh, he answers them like he doesn't Cowboys. know the answer to them. Like, oh, and, and, and it's, it's like the opposite of Judge. And I think Joe Judge was great at press conferences. Does that make Joe Judge a great head coach? No, because press conferences really don't matter at the end of the day. Besides the eleven minute rant, like that's that was not what Joe Judge usually did. Um, that stuff is what people will use against you. I won't use it against you really, but it's a fact that Brian Dable. Is pretty bad at the media. Yeah, I mean Jordan was even, and I don't blame like I don't blame Jordan. I was listening to the post game presser, or no, it was it was Monday. I think it was Monday on Zoom, and Jordan was just trying to get like something out of him. He was asking like rebuttal questions, and people were like, oh, media, 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 blah blah blah. But I mean, Dable just is not giving these guys anything. He's not answering questions. He's not even answering questions like he doesn't know the answer. He's just answering questions like. He just he just doesn't want to. Yeah, which is like when you're head coach, you kind of have to answer the questions. You can't like, just. I, I, you don't need to be Mister Congeniality and just. Oh, I'm happy to be here. I'll I'll give you everything I know. Well, blah, and, blah, and here's but, the thing for him: it helps you. Just give him a little something, and it yeah. makes them happy. Like you make the, those those clowns happy, and they you know they are, uh, you know, a little less hard on you. Because if which, this does take, which is not right, but it is reality. If this does take a right turn. Or a left turn, a wrong turn. Um, if it takes a right turn, I'm gonna ask our fan. Let's let's turn left. If it takes a bad turn, hey, Dave, if to be the left turn, right turns in NASCAR before Dave Gettleman trades down the draft. <laughs> yeah. Um, if this does take a wrong turn, man, it will be flipped on him quick because when things are bad, and they're not even they're, here's the thing: like the things with Giants, they're not even like bad right now. They're not even bad. They're just not seven and two. They're, they're just not. They just don't have one of the best records in the NFL. God forbid they're mediocre right now. But he he's acting like in the way that he approaches these press conferences that it's that it's bad, which I don't blame him. He's a competitor. He wants to win and he doesn't really want to be there if he loses. So, yeah, it's just the, the press conferences. Again, it's it's this whole like, well, they really don't matter at the end of the day, but it's like they kind of do. Yeah. Um. It's. Like me personally, I, all I care about is how good of a football coach you are. But yep. reporters don't know how to analyze football, so they go to the way you answer press conferences. And a lot of not talking Giants listeners, there's some, but for the most, like you know, more casual fans, like that's the tough that you know they're looking for headlines and don't give them to you. You yeah. know, like, I'm I more saw people like to... like Brian Dable's taking shots at Mike Kafka in this quote. It's like, no, he's not. No, you know, like I saw that video. It's like he's not taking shots at Mike Kafka. No. No, that's what people wanted it to be, but no. Yeah, I'm more Ridge excited Wallet. to hear Joe. I'm more Wait. excited to hear Joe Shane speak, and I'm excited to hear you talk about Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet. This episode was brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Two things I like about Ridge Wallet: one, the freaking color. I think it's dope, and it's so slim. It fits right in your like you could put it in your back pocket like without me. looking I'm like slim. A, like an a hole. Uh, it holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. Straight cash, homie. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. I'm a burnt titanium guy. It's just who I am. You know, like Arson Judge. I like I like fire. The wall has over 50,000 five-star reviews. Last time I checked, that's a lot. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. I tried to send something back for a refund the other day. They didn't get it. Screw you. Get the best with Ridge.com slash John Boy. And right now, you can save up to 40%. 
through December 22nd. That's ridge.com slash John Boy to save up to 40%. You'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. Final question is coming from Crabtree at Crabtree with a lot of numbers. Why didn't Bobby and Justin sit together at the game? We talked to each other enough. That was the least amount of time we've ever interacted on a trip up there. Yeah. It's like, because the tailgate, our heads are spinning. So we don't, you know, basically we got talking in the van and like the podcast. Um, yeah, I was recording the video, you know, you were at the van, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, just at the general tailgate talking with people. And I mean, even like during our events, because we're kind of just doing different things, like we, we don't really talk to each other. But we, 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 so it, it's, uh, there was times during the game. Cause you know, I was sitting with, uh, my brother and our respective ladies. There was times where the games was like, I want Justin's thoughts on this. Like I would like to bounce him off then. So we got to figure out a way next time we're all up there to just get all of our seats together. And Danny King. Um, yeah. Danny King sat with me. I think, uh, I think I freaked him out at some points. I am nice. very different. We have some talking giants listeners that sit by us. Like, um, I need, I got to find out this. I got to find out this, this guy's name. He's such a nice guy. We, he's been, Sitting in the row below me, he wears an Andrew Thomas jersey every week, which I love. Um, he's been sitting the ro- a row below me, like just a couple seats to the right of me for years. For years he's been, and we've never like really spoken or chatted with with each other. But then, you know, just earlier this season, first game of the year, he turns around and says, are you Justin? It's like, yeah. So there are some Talking Giants listeners that really get to see me at games. I, I, I'm much more negative at games. And I go a little bit more crazy at games than I am on the podcast. I try to keep it a little bit. Cool. It's something about the environment that makes you just more of a negative person. Like it's it's one of those things. that's like I understand the way people are yeah. in games because like just being at the game, it's just it it really makes you just more negative. When stuff at home, I'm good. quiet. At home, I'm very quiet. Uh, but when I'm at the game, and when I guess I have eight, also eighty thousand people screaming at, I don't want to say the same thing because I'll be screaming at. You know, I'll be screaming at somebody being Dude, the, maybe in a wrong. Here's spot. something the fans were really stupid. They when we had it was 12 seconds left in regulation and the Giants need the ball. People were booing, and it's like, what are you booing for? Like, what do you want us to do? Like, shut up. We're going to overtime. Yeah. Um. Why are you booing? That's a gif. Uh. But anyways, tailgate was um, fun. Like like we said. Yeah. No. I so you know flying home, I had like a um you know like oh this is kind of cool moment where like so like i went with family and and friends this time and so in 2019 you know i went with like i paid for my trip up there with my brothers so we kind of did some of the same things like went visit family the new york city uh you know jersey city viewing point and it was like it's kind of crazy three years ago how different uh this has changed yeah so was it are you talking about the 2019 tailgate well just like 20 like we're 2019 it's like 10 of it's like you know, it was like me, you, David Powis, John Boy, Topher P, and my brother. And now, yeah, it's and like, I mean, at that at that meeting, like I, I I felt bad, but you know, you asked me to join Talking Giants uh, at the end of 2019. We were going to roll it out and announce it at the beginning of 2020. So it was at that tailgate where basically the that entire tailgate, I was just talking with Jim through the entire thing because of all the ideas and the goals and the things that we were going to roll out, the things that I was going to bring to the show as a producer and et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, it's, it's crazy how this has changed. And you know, now that couldn't happen. Like, let's just say if we brought John boy to a tailgate and we were like going to talk about like business and vision for things that would not, that would not happen just because of how many people would be there. You get noticed by like four people in 2019. And now it's like, so I got noticed by four people not at the Giants game. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it, the, just the so community they were that we making. Built they is were awesome. making my my uh, my lady and then my brother and his lady were making fun of me because like we got, like someone noticed us at Olive Garden. Um, yeah, yeah. Where else? Uh, they uh, were from Texas. Those they, those two guys came to our tailgate and they 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 were from Texas and they said yeah, I saw yeah, Bobby. Yeah. A, I saw Bobby at an Olive Garden, <laughs> which is like which. We, why were you at Olive Garden? Come on. Well, we spent all day in the city, and it was just like, let's just go to the closest place around oh, us. Man, you went to an Olive Garden. Well, here's the thing: all the good Italian restaurants were closed. Could have went to Candlewick. Crying out loud! It was like t- it was like nine thirty, ten o'clock. No, this is the Jersey Diners open late. You kidding? 
True. I it wasn't my idea. I I'll say that. Um, Bad but idea. I, but Olive Garden was good too. Don't hate on Olive Garden. Yeah, I agree. Um, people hate on it, but it's like it's actually pretty good. I I, I agree. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, it's National Brown. It's like, no, nah, don't don't lie. Like you like it, and it's some Olive Garden. And then where else? Anyways, it was just it's kind of cool. It's like the season of three years. I had a moment where it's like this is this is pretty cool to see how this is all all grown so yeah both both tailgates for me this year and it was the draft like after it was all said and done with the draft we were like the oh, i always ranked. get emotional after the draft yeah we but i mean especially like just the reaction to it i mean we had that that will like never happen again like having <laughs> two top 10 picks maybe the next time it'll happen is when we draft the quarterback like in the first round that's the next time that maybe the hype around a draft will happen like that um but yeah man I mean, just the community that we've built is so so cool and it really it just isn't like i don't i don't i really don't reflect on like what bobby and i have done and i it's it's what we have done what we have done kind of kind of together and you know if it's just a you know if it's just a tailgate of bobby and i you know that's that's not cool it's the fact that we had over 100 people show up and you know that was very very cool and very yes, very awesome i'm very proud that. of what we what we as a collective community have done so Talking Giants versus the world, and that means if you're listening to this right now, you're part of that. All right, we'll be back on Friday for a preview pod of the Eagles. Fun, 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 fun. Uh, so we'll see you then. We appreciate you guys, like we just said. Until then, let's go Big Blue.